You were only old non-aggression. Once that lesson sets in, you'll see a session. But you got an affection for no progression. Regression, the best don't... Welcome to Roots of Storytelling with Mongo Slay. This is where I tell the story of a storyline from the past. Usually the one that's already complete. And we go through the three-act structure of the story, the characters, character motivations. And then we do, if it's a, you know, they're, um, then if they have some type of change. Usually characters have to go through a change or they change someone else. And in doing so, you know, you get to, you reveal a lot about the world and different things like that. So today I present to you a story of friendship, betrayal, egos, and obviously forgiveness. Uh, the Good Friends, Better Enemies, Shawn Michaels, and Diesel story. So this story runs from June of 1993 to April of 1996. So how does this thing start? Well, this starts, you can start with Act 1. It starts when Shawn Michaels hired the bodyguard. So Shawn Michaels, the Intercontinental Champion currently, is feuding with Marty Jannetty, and he's feuding with Sherry Martell, who is his former manager, and they're both trying to get their hands on Sean. Sean is a, a big, he's big on betrayal. You know, he's stabbing people in the back left and right. It's part of being the, the heartbreak kid. He breaks Sherry's heart. He breaks Marty Jannetty's heart. He breaks the hearts of the fans who love the Rockers. So for the last year and a half or so at this point, you know, Marty Jannetty's been trying to kill him. So he's brought in a bodyguard. This bodyguard, of course, is Kevin Nash, who later became known as Diesel. And at first, it's just a business relationship between the two of them. You really don't even know who Diesel is. He's just a big dude in a black glove. And this becomes the perfect situation because now Sean is getting involved with, you know, upper level. He's not just involved with Sherry, who's trying to get him taken out. Marty Jannetty is also trying to get him taken out. He's also feuding, I believe, in some parts of 93 with Mr. Perfect. So he has, you know, he has a need for a bodyguard. So on September 27th, 1993, Shawn Michael gets popped for steroids. Now, he's, of course, denied that he's ever done steroids. He claimed he's never done it. But he got popped for steroids. This, is, of course, means he has to give up the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, in doing so, they do this big battle royal where uh, the last two remaining will wrestle each other for the Intercontinental title. Those two will be Razor Ramon and Rick Martel. Uh, after that, Rick, of course, Razor Ramon wins the Intercontinental Championship and Sean comes back after his suspension. He just, you know, he says the storyline going into WrestleMania 10 is that Sean never lost the Intercontinental title and Razor is the rightful Intercontinental Champion. This leads to the title for title ladder match at WrestleMania 10 on March the 20th, 1994. Diesel is ringside for that match, but he does he can't really interfere because it's a it's a ladder match. Now, of course, in modern day, it would have been tons of diesel interference. But Sean loses that match. So now Razor is the uh, undisputed Intercontinental Champion, which is great because Diesel wants to win an Intercontinental title, and he does <clears throat> on April the 13th, 1994. Diesel on an episode of Superstars wins the Intercontinental Championship from Razor Ramon. And now we're starting to see that Diesel and Sean are actually buddies. You know, we, we actually start seeing that, you know, it's not just a business relationship, that they're actually becoming friends. And uh, Sean helps Diesel with this, you know, win the Intercontinental title. And then the momentum continues now that, you know, the, 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 they're not quite the two dudes with attitudes yet, but they've got quite a bit of momentum now. And, not too long after Diesel wins the Intercontinental Championship, on August the 28th, 1994, they become tag team champions, defeating, I believe, the Head Shrinkers for the tag team championship. And at this point, Diesel is a double champion. Sean only has a belt because of Diesel. But Diesel is a double champion. They have tremendous amounts of momentum. But of course, as we know, things can't stay the same forever. So Diesel loses the Intercontinental Championship, August 29th, 1994. This is at SummerSlam. This is, of course, the famous match with Walter Payton outside the ring. Now, if you remember this, uh, Sean is running about outside the ring, and he distracts Diesel. He also, I think, at one point kicks Diesel. He is the reason Diesel lost. 
right? He he's the one of the reasons that Diesel loses. Diesel loses the Intercontinental Championship to Razor Ramon. Ironically, the guy he won it from and one of their buddies. So this, they're still the tag team champions though. So at least they got something going for themselves until November the twenty third, nineteen ninety four, at Survivor Series ninety four. In this match, Sean super kicks Diesel again, but this time again by accident. Sean is trying to. Uh, well, Diesel is trying to hold, I believe, Razor Ramon. He's doing so very lack lackadaisically. He's just holding him by the head, and and Razor ducks, boom. And for the second time, Sean has kicked Diesel. And this time, Diesel has had enough. And they start to argue, and they're yelling back and forth at each other. And Sean, of course, being the cowardly heel, is like, oh, no, I don't want no part of this. He flees. He runs away from Diesel as Diesel is chasing him and trying to get his, hold, trying to get his hands on him. Sean quits the team. So technically he quit the team that night, but I believe they were stripped the next day. So it would either be November 23rd or November 24th. They actually surrender the tag team championships. You know, of course, Sean refuses to lose to belts in the way that he won them, which is in the ring. So <laughs> it makes, he's just allergic to dropping titles. So they skate. Now they don't have any championship. Now they're not even friends anymore. And, after this breakup, Diesel wins the WWF title from Bob Backlund on November 26th, three days after the tag team championships are surrendered. Eight seconds at a house show at Madison Square Garden. So we see at the end of the first act that they've gone from, you know, business partners to friends. That Diesel personally has gone from being a, a nameless bodyguard to being the world champion. You know, a, a guy who's a star on his own. And in one year, he surpassed everything Shawn Michaels has ever done. And this kind of leads us into Act 2. So at the beginning of Act 2, Diesel is the world champion. Uh, Shawn wins the Royal Rumble in on uh, November January 22nd, 1995. So of course this means that they're going to collide at WrestleMania. Now... Before we get there, we have some we have some interesting things that they do. For instance, Sean picks up a new bodyguard. He knows he has to wrestle Diesel. At least he it appears that he has to wrestle Diesel. So he needs a new bodyguard. So he picks up Sid, Psycho Sid, Sid Vicious, or whatever you want to call him, as his new bodyguard on February twentieth, nineteen ninety five. So you know they do an interesting thing here at the Royal Rumble, where Pamela Anderson is supposed to accompany the winner of the Royal Rumble to the ring at WrestleMania. So this, of course, leads us to WrestleMania 11, the WWF Championship match, Shawn Michaels versus Diesel. Of course, April the 2nd, 1995. And they had pretty much told the story of Shawn and Diesel up to this point. Of course, they gave Shawn a, a bodyguard for obvious reasons because Diesel is so big. They also do a little bit of a switcheroo where Jenny McCarthy ends up walking Shawn to the ring because she's sort of the bad girl from MTV. And Pamela Anderson walks Diesel to the ring. So Diesel wins the match, obviously. And the very next night, April the 3rd, 1995, Sean, you know, cuts a promo where in which he says he couldn't take his mind off their friendship. He had a little bit of distraction from their friendship. And also, he kind of blamed his loss on Sid. That Sid had distracted the ref. And that Sid was in the way. And that he doesn't really need Sid. If he's, He doesn't need a bodyguard, rather. That is going to distract the referee and cost him the title. So he says, for the big rematch, Sid, I'm going to give you the night off. So Sid, for some reason, this flipped a switch in him. And he decides he's going to brutalize Shawn Michaels. And so he does. Power bombs him a bunch of times, beats the hell out of him. And this is where we get Diesel running to the ring to save Shawn Michaels. And this is, you know, a pretty, a pretty good moment. I actually really like this from a character perspective. Because it goes to show that even showing Sean is a rotten bastard, uh, Diesel doesn't really see it that way. You know, he still remembers Sean as being Sean. Sean is his friend, regardless of uh, how, you know, ridiculous Sean is. And he's not exactly over the top trying to beat him bloody, but he's been a bit of a dick, you know, and it's egos and all that kind of stuff. This leads to a, you know, a several month feud between Diesel and Sid. In, um, which took place between May and July of 1995. And it ends, I believe, with their Lumberjack match, if, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's been a while since I saw it. 
So around this time, now they see it beat up Sean, you know, the dudes are kind of moving back towards each other. You know, Sean, Sean is a baby face again. Everything's starting to look up. Uh, Shawn Michaels wins the Intercontinental Championship on July the 23rd, 1995 from Jeff Jarrett. Uh, the match was phenomenal, by the way. Um, Jarrett and Shawn doesn't get enough credit. I'm surprised. I don't think, I don't think they worked that many times against each other. But it was it was pretty good. This put Sean back on top. You know, Sean is now building his redemption story. Now that Sean is a babyface again, he can be friends with Diesel. Sean and Diesel win the tag team championships September twenty fourth, nineteen ninety five. Now this, of course, is the famous uh, winner take all match, where it's the Intercontinental Champion Shawn Michaels, the WWF Champion Diesel versus the tag team champions of Owen Hart and Yokozuna. Now, during the show, there was a running uh, through line through the show where Owen Hart is not going to appear on the show. And Owen is, the, the, of course, the actual tag team champion. I think it's Gorilla Monsoon decides, hey, if Owen doesn't show up, you got to replace him. So Jim Cornette chooses the British Bulldog. So for this particular match, the British Bulldog is the tag team champion. So when Owen Hart runs to the ring near the end of the match, gets hit and power bombed and pinned. Technically, they pinned the tag team champion, but since he wasn't in the match, Bulldog was the champion. They didn't win the tag team title. So technically they won them, but also they didn't win them. So they were the champions, but then they got stripped because of course, Sean doesn't want to lose a title. So they got all the belts. <laughs> they had all the belts for like 12 hours and they were stripped the next night on Raw. November, September 25th, 1995. So all things are looking good for the for the dudes now. You know, they were the tag team champions. They both have titles. They're both best friends. Everything is great. And then things start to get a little sour. October 22nd, 1995, Sean has to relinquish the Intercontinental Championship because he got beat up by a Marine in Syracuse. So, you know, Sean has to drop his belt. This is, of course, where they gave it to Shane Douglas, who then promptly lost it to Razor Ramon. So Sean loses his title. Uh, now Diesel loses his title. Uh, November the 19th, 1995, in a, I believe it was No Holds Barred, uh, Diesel versus Bret the Hitman Hart, Survivor Series 1995. So the story of this match is, of course, Diesel is overpowering Bret. And Bret outsmarts Diesel to win the match. He tricks him. He plays possum, thinks Diesel, makes Diesel believe that he actually has the match won. Diesel gets real lackadaisical, small package, he gets pinned. Afterwards, Diesel shows very visible frustration. Uh, Brett had tricked him, he got one over on him, and he wasn't going to let that slide. So he pummels Brett and power bombs him twice to end the show. Of course, we're starting to see that heel turn. We're starting to see, you know, a little bit more of an edge to the Diesel character. So at the end of the second act, Diesel has gone from being the world champion, you know, super baby face, to now being a sort of tweener heel. But he's, he's of course, he's a heel because he jumped Bret Hart, who was a baby face after the match. And we start to see that Diesel, the success has gone to Diesel's head. He's become more arrogant. He's become more violent. He's become more aggressive. He's also become more obsessed with getting his title back. While Sean is now becoming a more sympathetic character, you know, we know that Sean got beat up. We know that Sean, you know, is going to have a difficult time. And these things continue at the beginning of Act 3, because this is where we do the post-concussion syndrome angle with Shawn Michaels. November the 20th, 1995. The episode of Raw where Owen Hart does the insiguri to Shawn Michaels, kicks him in the head, and they do the stretcher spot where it's like dead silent and nobody says anything. This was a great, great, great segment. And it goes to show how you can take wrestling seriously, like they might have done in the uh, in the old days. And this was excellent. Owen Hart comes out of this thing looking like the most dastardly heel to ever exist. He's talking about how he booted Sean in the head. Sean's never coming back. He's bragging about it. And so when you know when he's going to brag about it, bad things are going to occur. So... Diesel comes out of nowhere and decides he's going to wreck Owen Hart. So, uh, <laughs> December 1995, I, I don't remember the exact date. I believe it was a In Your House, where Diesel just puts the boots to, to Owen Hart for all the things he did to Sean. 
And of course, this of course continues that these guys are friends. You know, Diesel is still friends with Sean even after all of this. Royal Rumble 1996, January 21st, 1996. A big night because, you know, not only does Sean win the Royal Rumble by eliminating Diesel, who was his final opponent, he super kicks Diesel over the top rope. But this is where we actually get Diesel becoming more involved with everybody else. Now, his obsession with his title is becoming more apparent. He interrupts the main event, which is Bret Hart versus The Undertaker. Costs The Undertaker the title. Him and Undertaker have their back and forth. Um, this, of course, is going to lead to WrestleMania 12. But um, in February of 1996, Shawn Michaels gets his revenge on Owen Hart. Uh, by, you know, putting his WrestleMania title shot on the line against Owen Hart. This match was phenomenal. I really love this match. I think most people should. It's very underrated uh, between the two guys. And at this same show, Rage in the Cage 96, um, Diesel gets screwed out of the WWF title by The Undertaker. Now, this has had some really good visual storytelling in so much that Diesel loses the match because Undertaker crawled from under the ring and pull Diesel into the into the into the hole, allowing Brett to escape. Now, if you look at it from a visual storytelling way, what you get is Diesel descending into madness. This is what we've been showing you since November: is that Diesel is starting to lose it. You know, like you may think that he's a he's a quote unquote tweener up to this point, but he's becoming more and more of a straight up heel. Okay, and this is visually told to us by Undertaker pulling Diesel into this hole. So if you thought Diesel was a tweener before, then March the 18th, on that episode of Raw, you see footage from a house show, I believe it was in Madison Square Garden, where Diesel interrupts a match. You know, I believe it was a tag team match, actually. It might have been Brett and Diesel, Brett and Undertaker versus Sean and Diesel, I think it was. And Diesel waylays everybody with a chair, including Shawn Michaels. So we get the official Diesel heel turn at a house show where Diesel has just pummeled everybody with a, with, a, with a chair. He's now officially a stone cold heel. This is oh, two weeks before WrestleMania or something like that. So uh, at this point, you, you probably saw the, the epic footage of Sean saying that he's going to beat Diesel's ass. I'm going to beat your seven foot ass, which is the, <laughs> the comment coming out of this, this segment. Now Diesel's a full blown heel. You know, Diesel is obsessed with being the champion. He doesn't even care about having friends anymore. And this leads to March 31st, 1996. He's going to wrestle The Undertaker. Sean's going to wrestle Bret the Hitman Hart for the WWF title in the Iron Man match. So earlier in the night, of course, Sean is wrestling. I mean, well, Diesel is wrestling Undertaker. And Diesel is, again, cocky. He's arrogant. He's got Undertaker beat. He's jacked and knifed him twice. And he's like, well, I got him. You know, it's over. But of course, this is The Undertaker. He doesn't work that way. He gets tombstoned and he loses. Later in the show, Sean goes the distance with Brett. They do a little extra time. Sean wins the WWF Championship. The boyhood dream is now achieved. This, of course, leads to Brett going off on a sabbatical after a while and Undertaker being wrapped up literally with other things. I believe he started feuding with like gold dust after this. And because he attacked Sean before, Diesel and Sean are still entangled. Now, of course, we know at this point, it's, you know, pretty much if you're a quote unquote smart fan, you know that Diesel's days in the WWF are coming to an end. So we ended up with the Good Friends, Better Enemies match on uh, with No Holds Barred, Sean versus Diesel, April 28th, 1996, which is, of course, famous for a couple of things. One being a huge table spot where Sean was powerbombed through the table. And Vince McMahon is screaming, let it be over. Let it be over. <laughs> also for, uh, I believe it was Mad Dog Rashawn, his leg was taken and used as a weapon in this match. But Sean defeats Diesel, you know, head up. And this is one of the last Diesel appearances, you know, you know, televised appearances for the WWF. And uh, this was, you know, a big deal. This was near the comb this was the on-screen culmination of their three-year story but as we know because we're a little bit smarter than the average bear it didn't end this way then there was the curtain call so the curtain call takes place at a house show where it was Shawn michaels versus diesel in a cage and we they get the they do the match sean wins 
And then everybody, Triple H comes out there, Razor Ramon comes out there, and they do the big hug at the end. And it's baby faces and his heels mixing together, and it's guys who are leaving and guys who are staying. And it's a big hubbub. It's a big ordeal. Now, if you look at it in terms of storytelling, now this is going to be a little bit controversial, but if you look at it in terms of storytelling, this is a perfect cherry on top. This is Sean forgiving Diesel. You know, like, sure, it's in real life, them, you know, thumbing their nose to the wrestling business. Hey, I want to hang out with my friends. But if you put it in the context of their of their characters, this is Sean saying, I know you were obsessed with being the champion, but I'm the guy. You can't beat me. You know, I forgive you. So at the end of the day, that's kind of, you know, if you end the story with the curtain call, that's. That's a good way of looking at it. Nate, of course, refused to bring it into lore and do it in that way. But I'm doing it because it seems to make a, a great sense for the the ending, the cap of this story that began years prior with Diesel being just an unknown bodyguard that was brought in by Sean and him, his meteoric rise to the top and Sean's jealousy and egos and desires and all these sorts of things that have been commingling over all this time. And this has been, you know, a really good story. It's a real good feel good story. And it's a very interesting tale. So let's talk about the David Mamet question. So a lot of people, you know, we go through the David Mamet questions as four questions. And uh basically this is pretty simple. You know, you know, what is what is their desires? You know, what obstacles are in their way? What are the stakes? What happens if they don't get it? That sort of thing. And then the final question is, why now? Why are these things happening now? So looking at it from these perspectives, what is their desire? They're both competitive. They're both ambitious. They both want to be the champion. At this point in, in, in wrestling, there could only be one champion. And because simply, since they didn't do babyface versus babyface all the time, they preferred babyface and heel, it was necessary for one of them to be the heel whenever they had to interact with each other. And it was usually Sean, you know, of course, until the later years, then, then it was, you know, Diesel. But that was their desire. They both wanted to be the champion. They both wanted to be as good as they could be. And what obstacles were in the way? Well, the obstacles were egos. You know, their egos, their entitlements, their jealousy, their friendship was a big one that was in the way. Uh, them being friends, you know, they kept trying. Well, Sean, of course, his ego was, you know, Diesel was meteoric rise. And, you know, Diesel beats the guy he couldn't beat for the Intercontinental Championship, even though he he aided him. Uh, he he wanted to be a tag team champion. Diesel didn't really want that either. So there are some there's a lot of, uh, of, of obstacles there. You know, as far as actual physical obstacles that they, they can fight was Razor Ramon and Bret the Hitman Hart. Where you had Bret Hart, who defeated Diesel for the title, but lost the, the title to Sean. And you had Razor Ramon, who beat Sean for the Intercontinental Championship, lost it to Diesel. Uh, ended up back with it anyway. But <laughs> uh, I didn't mention it, but Sean, of course, defeated Razor Ramon at SummerSlam 95 in a ladder match. So he got his win back in that ladder match, too. <laughs> so... But that was sort of the the obstacles there it was it was Brett and it was Razor and it was their own entitlement, their own ambitiousness and their own friendship. You know, it played a part in that WrestleMania 11 story that, you know, how much of their friendship was going to get in the way. The third question is, what happens if they don't get it? What are the stakes? What is on the line here? And for Shawn Michaels, who is an obviously arrogant character, it is, of course, his self-esteem, you know, He's not as good as he thinks he is. Or, you know, late in the later years, of course, Sean would be, would take this arrogance that has already existed within the character and blow it up even more. You know, the showstopper, the main event, all this sort of stuff. It kind of began with him finally achieving his dream, him finally getting there. And for Diesel, it was the, a, a some, of the, some of the same. He never really had, you could see that Diesel never really had the, intention of being the champion but for him it became a power game you know he wanted the status he wanted the money of being the champion he wanted to be the top guy he wanted to be the the bull of the woods that's what his match with undertaker was all about you know who was the real true badass of the wwe and uh, of course undertaker won that because why wouldn't he so it but it was about his feud with sean was mostly about chase about the title you know it wasn't about you know there were 
there, there was a hatred between the two of them. It was all about, okay, this is a, well, the, the second match was about Diesel's obsession with the title. The first match was not about Sean's obsession with the title, but about Sean winning the Royal Rumble is sort of a circumstance thing. You know, if Sean wins the Royal Rumble in 1995 and then Diesel loses the title, he doesn't have to compete with Diesel. But they were put in a position where they had to feud with each other because Sean wants to be the champion and Diesel has the belt. Now, in the second feud, of course, it was Diesel's choice to chase the title while Sean was the champion and to assault Sean and do all of these different things. Like, you know, it's not a circumstantial situation. It's a situation that Diesel created, you know, due to his own jealousy and entitlement. So why now? Why, why did these things happen? And it goes back to what I just said about the circumstances. You know, a lot of the, the, the reason why they kept falling out was... You know, they like to do the whole Diesel is holding the guy so Sean can super kick him. And then over time, Diesel got a little bit lackadaisical with it, not really holding guys as, you know, as strongly as he could. And he would kick Diesel. This, of course, led to their breakup and the animosity between the two of them. This, of course, Royal Rumble 1995, where Sean wins the Rumble and Diesel's the champion. So it's an inevitable conclusion. Um, Diesel's overwhelming desire to win the title. You know, all of this stuff is why it's why these why their collisions are actually happening is usually around either miscommunication or around the title. And so that's how the David Mamet question. But now let's talk about change arcs. Change arcs is our KM Wyland thing. So from we look if we look at the entire scope of the of the characters, what we saw is that Diesel had a had a sort of circular uh, arc because Diesel starts out as a heel. You know, he starts off as the, as the sort of quiet, menacing heel of Shawn Michaels. You know, tough, street smart, baby face following that, you know, where he's sort of a, a pretty good guy. Then he becomes cocky and entitled. You know, he stopped caring about his friends. He cared only about money and status. You know, he literally, of course, like I said earlier, he literally descends into madness. This turns him from being uh, a sort of uh, emotionless, uh, drywall ba uh, bodyguard to being a, a real character now. You know, like he's really got a fleshed out personality where he has individual desires and motivations, but they're all negative because you know, <laughs> he skyrocketed to the top a little too fast. And then those things went to his head. And then he starts to believe that that's where he should be. And, you know, so it started out as a heel. He turned babyface. was the Biggest one of the biggest baby faces in the company, probably number three, even though he was a champion. He's less of a baby face than Undertaker or Bret Hart. And then he comes back around and ends up as a heel, but he ends up as a more interesting heel than he had been when he started in 1993. Um, and then with Sean, you got a positive change arc because at the end of all this, Sean ends up as the being the, the conquering hero, the baby face. You know, Sean starts out as this cocky heel. You know, he's egotistical he's ambitious and through the power of friendship like an anime sean starts to you know break up through that fog you know diesel helped him you know when sid beat him up and the clique is formed not backstage but like the crowd who actually cares about him and they feed into that crowd with sympathy you know sean has to surrender the intercontinental title due to getting beat up in syracuse sean has to you know fight back at Royal Rumble 1996 after a concussion. And, you know, Sean has to overcome the, the guy who gave him a concussion in Owen Hart. Now Sean has to conquer the, the greatest champion in modern history and Bret the Hitman Hart. He has to wrestle him for an hour plus. And now Sean gets stabbed in the back by his best friend. He has to overcome that. So Sean comes out of this thing with, a you know, smelling like a newborn baby. You know, baby powder all over him. And it's a great story. Great change. Because you can see that Shawn Michaels' character changed when he finally found some sort of acceptance. That, you know, as... And it actually is very interesting because, like I said, when I started this... When we started this thing, Shawn's character had betrayed Marty Jannetty. That's where the heartbreak kid comes from. And then, of course, he goes through the boy toy era of, you know, being with uh, Sherry Martell and he betrays her too. Remember he pushes Sherry in front of the mirror and it shatters over her head and he flees. And in this situation, 
you know, Sean is the one who gets betrayed. He gets betrayed by Sid. And then he also gets betrayed by Diesel. But before Sid betrays him, you know, he, well, after Sid betrays him, before Diesel betrays him, he finds a, a, a pocket, you know, there's a certain little pocket of time there where he finds acceptance and he finds friendship and the fans love him and Diesel loves them and they're buddies and, every, and everybody's got what they want. You know, Diesel's got a belt, Sean's got a belt, they win the tag team titles, everything is good, you know? And that turns Sean into a different character. It turns him into a different personality. He stops being sort of the sexy boy, boy, boy toy, and he becomes someone else. He becomes a more, a fuller personality, a fuller character. And it all comes through the power of friendship. You know, having a positive friend like he had with Marty Jannetty back when they were the Rockers. And, you know, back in the good graces of the audience. But it took some betrayals and some backstabbing in order to get Sean back to that place. So he's been through a lot in three years. And it's a very interesting angle if you look at it from uh, from 10,000 feet. You can see the entire uh, angle. And it's very well done. It was in the slow burn is what made it so good. If they didn't immediately fall out and then start having a bunch of matches, that's kind of what they do now. These guys were linked up in some way for three years and only had two matches, two, you know, and maybe, you know, two televised matches. So that's it. That's the story of Shawn Michaels and Diesel, good friends, better enemies, uh, the curtain call, uh, everything that encompasses this. This story has, you know, quite a big deal to do with Shawn being a star, you know, because it was, it, Diesel helped him go, go forward. And just as much as, you know, Diesel was pulling himself up. He was also pulling up Sean, too, because he gave him somebody to, to relate to, somebody to bounce off of. And um, it was great for Sean's growth. And I don't think Sean would be where he is later in his later years if he did not have those matches with Diesel, you know, to show that he can wrestle bigger guys in the believable matches and, you know, to test the limits of his character and his acting, his motivations and, you know, the Shawn Michael School of Melodrama and theatrics, all that stuff comes from his, you know, feuding with Diesel and stuff like that, and this whole storyline here, so this is really good, so thank you guys for listening, uh, like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel, thank you guys for your time, and I will talk to you guys later, man, peace out. Oh, non-aggression. Once that lesson sets in, you'll see a session. But you got an affection for no progression. Regression.